guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? We are back with another How About Them Celtics video seminar here, recording Thursday, September 21st, and Buddy Heald is the talk of the town. This will probably be the first of the videos that we're recording today that we put out, just because mm. realistically, he could be traded at any point. It feels like they might take a little while and trade him, um, either at the start of the regular season or right before during training camp, but it does feel like something that has become just the talk of the NBA landscape now, um, because of how out of nowhere it came, that him and the Pacers... Uh, couldn't agree on a contract extension, which was reported by Sham Strania, uh, of the athletic and basically said, okay, we're going to look for a trade healed entering the last year of his contract, making 19.3 million, um, <clears throat> is one of the best shooters in NBA history. He's like 39th all time in threes. And he's only played in the league for how many years at this point? Like six Seven. years, <clears throat> Seven Same years. Class, Jaylen. um, <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, I saw something somewhere that Steph Curry is one of X amount of players to shoot, 40% from three on eight attempts a game. And there are only this many players who've done it. And buddy healed has done that over the last six seasons combined shot over eight attempts a game and shot 40% aggregate from deep. So like he is legitimately one of the best shooters in the NBA right now might be second behind Steph. Um, and the Celtics have been brought up as a potential landing spot for him. Now that the trade thing uh, has gone through uh, pulling this title from this article written by Tyler Conway of Bleacher Report, <clears throat> Buddy mm. Heald's top potential landing spots amid, pace, amid Pacers trade rumors. Lakers one, Spurs another, but right in the middle there is the Boston Celtics. Um, and I'll, I'll explain Tyler's point of view, then we can get into <clears throat> why or why not the Celtics should do it in potential trades. Brogdon doesn't appear happy with the Celtics. Adding Heal doesn't do anything to solve Boston's desperate need for a reliable primary ball hander, but neither did Brogdon as he was floundering in the ECF. Miami throttled Boston's stagnant and predictable offense. Celtics front office has clearly taken an offense over defense strategy this offseason. Porzingis for Smart and Williams. Um, <clears throat> Brogdon for Heald is an imperfect solution, but it may be the only one Boston has before the start of the regular season. Celtics can't. Uh, find an available point guard in Brockton's price range. They should float his name out there along with first and get the job done. If they can't, Heald is potentially a prolific scorer um, who could take away some of the burden on Tatum and Brown. <clears throat> I don't hate the idea, and I saw something on Twitter today that made me hate, hate it even less. I have yet to read the article, but I saw it from Basketball Poetry, who uh, okay. is Michael Shear, who I used to work with at Fansided, who is, uh, he wrote there. He wrote an article called Nine Players with a surprising skill and talked about buddy Heald's versatile defense, which is something I didn't expect to uh, hear about buddy Heald in context. It does make a little sense because he played a lot of power forward for the Pacers last season because they were rolling out really small didn't lineups. Neesmith do that too. <clears throat> yeah. They were rolling out Neesmith and buddy Heald as their three, four. So they were playing a lot of small ball lineups with Halliburton and Nemhard in the backcourt. So it does make sense that he had to adapt them defensive end makes me a little bit more in on the potential trade idea for buddy Heald. Um, <clears throat> like, Tyler Conway wrote for Bleach Report. It's a completely imperfect solution. Um, he doesn't give you the ball handling of Brogdon. <clears throat> that said, he's played 80 games this year. Before that, he played 81, 71, 72, 82, 80. So if you're looking for a healthy option, knock on wood, Buddy Heald is a pretty good one. Um, shot 42.5% from deep, so he would replace the three-point shooting <clears throat> Excuse me, that you would get from Brogdon. A uh, high-volume shooter, too. So Joe Mazzula is absolutely licking his chops. Uh, averaged 17 points a game last season. Obviously had a lot of opportunities as well. But <clears throat> I don't hate the idea of Brogdon for Buddy Heald. <clears throat> it's like I said, not perfect. But if you have to trade Brogdon, you can't find a great deal for another ball hander. This replaces the biggest thing that the Celtics were using Brogdon as last season, which they were using him as a three-point shooter, as a spot-up three-point shooter. and Teams are going to run out to guard Buddy Heald. He's going to create a lot of space for the rest of Boston's creators. If you could somehow expand the deal and add salary to the point where you could get a uh, TJ McConnell in it too to fix your guard depth, even better. Um, but I don't hate the idea of Buddy Heald in Boston. I think he's a three-point shooter that would help space the floor, and the Celtics seem to love that anyway. So, Go back to the basketball reference. Yeah, here you go. So scroll down. Yep. You'll see the per game, right? Now, typically on basketball reference, there is a tab next to the regular season, the playoffs. Buddy yeah. Hill has never played the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to come out and be like it's his fault that he's never played in the playoffs, because that's not gonna necessarily say. fair. <laughs> yeah. But there is an element, just like with Christian Wood, where these guys put up numbers 
but they might not necessarily be the most impactful players towards winning. Again, it's not really fair for a Buddy Heald type to completely pin that on him, but it is odd. He's been in the the league for seven years now, and he has never been on a playoff team. Uh, I disagree. I mean, he was in Sacramento for the first how many years of his career? No, I'm, I'm saying like <laughs> it's not completely his fault. I don't think it's his fault at all. I I think there's some element of why has this guy never been able to make the playoffs? I think it's because he's always been on terrible teams. And it, it's it, – I I see it with a Christian Wood type more because Christian Wood is – He's also very, been on a bunch of teams. More, yeah, more sure. than Buddy Heald. Christian Wood is very ball dominant. He is – I need the ball. I need my touches. I'm going to put up 20 and 10. I'm going to be one of the primary guys. Um, Zach Levine, even, if you want to use him. I know you don't like mm. him. He's another one. He is very ball dominant. He needs his touches. He's going to be the primary focal point of an offense. And if you take it away from him – he's a shell of his best self. Same for Christian Wood. Like you put him in a complimentary role. He's not right. himself. Buddy healed is attempting. Let's see. He attempted 13 shots a game this past year. Eight and a half of them were threes during his best years in Sacramento. He was attempting, you know, yeah. uh, 11 shots, five or threes. Like he's going to that take 19 a season, eight a game, almost mm-hmm. 43% from, mm-hmm. from three. And Those are good numbers. If you put him in Boston, I would bet you money that his numbers would look like 10 shots a game, eight threes a game. Like he's just all he would have to do in Boston, where not only would he be able to thrive as a complimentary piece, because it'll be the first time in his career he's where he's truly going to be asked to just do the thing he's best at. These are his numbers. Really, really good numbers playing with the Pacers and Kings. Imagine how much floor spacing Buddy Heels would have in Boston. He would have so much room. <laughs> New FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube at YouTube TV. Imagine if you want, if you want to play more into that, you can go look at Malcolm Brogdon last year, who came from the Pacers yep. with Buddy Heald. And shot a career high by far from three. Yep. Al Horford, who shot 45%, 42%, whatever he shot last year. Grant Williams, who shot 40 plus percent over the last couple of years. Like, it's a true thing. But I do think there's something to be said about somebody that's never played in the playoffs. I just think, I'm, I'm not saying that it means you don't go get them. But I think it's just like, a, huh, he doesn't have that experience. A- at the very least, you you can be like, Wow, he doesn't have the experience of playing any in very many meaningful games because it hasn't happened for him yet. So how is he going to perform when the lights are bright? I'm not completely sure. It doesn't mean I hate this idea. I think if the Celtics move on from Brogdon, they're going to have work to do. There's going to have to be alternative routes that they take to help reshape their roster because I don't think you can roll into the season with Derek White being backed up by Peyton Pritchard and TJ McConnell and expect to have great guard play does that mean that tatum can't take on responsibilities of handling the ball it sure doesn't but i don't really want a heliocentric offense from the celtics i think they were at their best when the ball moves around as much as it can and it, it's great to have a facilitator i'm excited to see Derek white thrive in the role so maybe you see an austin river signing we, we talked about that on the pod it's a possibility maybe you see a different brogdon trade i know you mentioned tyus jones in the last video or yeah. you did not mention that, but Bleacher Report put it in one of their trades that should have happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you've mentioned Tyus Jones in the past. So I like Tyus Jones. Credit, credit Jack for mentioning guys <laughs> that other people agree with. <laughs> Buddy Hield would be an interesting ad, though. I think that lethal shooter would be great. I'm just curious to how he would hold up in a real, real playoff scenario. I agree, and I think that's a concern. I just think it's less so of a concern compared to guys like Levine and Wood because Buddy Heald's role would be so defined yeah. and so clear. All he has to do is shoot threes. And for what it's worth, this is players last year who shot on wide open threes who took at least 100. Let's mm. take a look. 127 for Michael Porter Jr. shot very well. You look down here, 100, 150, 150, 150. Buddy Heald last season, 319 wide open threes, 47.6%. Let's compare that to other guys who shot the volume. Oh, look at that. Malcolm Brogdon right there. You want to replace his three-point shooting? <laughs> Buddy Heald is yep. right there. And what's even better in the case of Buddy Heald? Look at Brogdon, right? Three-point shooting. 44.4% last year. Great. 
that's his best outlier. by a pretty wide margin. Outlier, he did it back in 2018-19. Buddy healed last year, <clears throat> shot 42.5%. Not an outlier. <laughs> Not at all an outlier. <laughs> he had a rough season last year when he was getting integrated into the Indiana offense. But past that, 39, There's another 39, point like. 42, 43, 39. <laughs> like, yeah. <clears throat> if you add in heel as a replacement for Brogdon, they're going to be asked to do pretty much the same thing. This is something you complained about. Yeah. Is Brogdon was just used as a shooter spot up guy last year when he's really capable of so much more. Field would uh, field healed would <laughs> fill that role much better. Just that's Agreed. what he's done his whole career. He's done it on bad teams, to your point. Hasn't done in the playoffs. But he's been able to be efficient when maybe the looks aren't the best for him. Yeah. Agree. I agree. And Buddy Healed, what else? I was gonna say one more thing. Oh, yeah, like Assist numbers. Buddy Heald averaged 2.8 assists last season. Malcolm Brogdon last season, 3.7. Mm-hmm. Like they're going to be asking to do the same thing, right? Like you just said. So I, I'm, I would be down for a Buddy Heald trade. I think it would be fine. I think it would make, even make some sense for the Pacers. They want to get in a second guard playing next to Halliburton, who's comfortable off the ball. Brogdon just did that for a full season here. He could go back to starting in Indiana. You put Brogdon on that team with the secondary shot creation to replace uh, Buddy Heald. Not only does um, do I think it could help them improve next season, especially with Halliburton's internal growth, but also it extends the window of them having that salary slot and tradable asset because he is under contract for next year as well. The only concern with Buddy Heald trade to Boston is it's probably a rental. Like, are they going to re-sign Buddy Heald, <clears throat> especially considering Might as well. you could want? Yeah. If it's, they have bird rights on, on him, I think he would be a bird rights guy because he's only really been traded. I don't think he's changed teams through free agency just yet. Yeah. So I think they carry over. We talked about this a lot in the video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're not positive on that. Sorry. I know someone's be like, you guys should know more about that if you're going <laughs> to talk about it. But how much would you resign him for, though? Like, what would be your I, number? I don't know. 20, like, around 25? what he's making 20 ish. <laughs> I mean, I, I am very much of the belief, which I've started to say over the past week, I don't really care what you pay guys as long as you keep your top guys around, which you're going to be able to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Go into the tax I, second apron. Don't care. Win. Yeah, I only you bring it up as a uh, smart. I only bring it up as a quote unquote concern, even though, again, I don't like pay your guys because the Pacers reportedly offered him a contract and he was said it wasn't what what is I want to find the way that Shams phrased it because it was like it raised an eyebrow for me. Like, OK, I wonder if it was just a bad deal or if Buddy Heald is like <clears throat> asking for too much. Um He said, it's believed their proposal did not make the seven-year guard feel desired. So is it like too low or is he just asking for too much money? So that's the only weird part. I'm in for Buddy Hill to Boston. I think it would leave you some questionable point guard depth. But I think they're, like we said, he'd be asked to do the same thing. But it is what it is. Let us know what you think in the comments and I'll let Sam get us out. Yes, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for new videos daily. You can find them on the channel. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can find us on socials at How About Them Seas. That's Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Facebook is just the name of the podcast. You can find Jack at Jack's My NBA on Twitter. You can find me at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. Bye. Yeah.